the race of Fuji is over. What a race! Andre, it's your call. You know the conditions and track better than we do. Well, now it's been three. We don't have much to lose. What do you think about going to Flix? 10.47.40 points. Good job, Mark. Current average is fast on track. Final lap, the final lap. To know who's going to stand here, stay tuned. Marcel, you like to be behind? Yeah, it's the safest place behind the drivers. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it was red light, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fans, you know. <laughs> we walk like that to the no way. And the fans then they don't recognize us. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, you Mr. Lotere. It's my duty to bring you safe to the track. <laughs> the championship makes its way to the foot of Mount Fuji, the WEC drivers prepare for a race weekend full of enthusiastic fans and also the challenge of tackling this spectacular circuit. Then it has uh, many high-speed corners in the middle sector. <laughs> One of the longest straight line in the world, which is nearly 1.5 kilometers. You are able to, to follow the other cars in the last sector and you always have a chance to, to overtake at the, the first corner here. Normally, it makes, uh, it makes the, the race really interesting. The last sector is very technical. It's low speed and uh, also the blind for the LMP cars. <laughs> quite hard to overtake the GT, especially in Sector 3 and Sector 2, so the key point to win this race, first of all, it will be tire management and for sure uh, the traffic. Turn 11, 12, 13 is a slow chicane 
Very risky, very dangerous with the GT because GT at the apex of the corner, believe it or not, is actually the same speed as us and LMP1. If anything, they're quicker than both us and LMP1 at the apex. Sector 2 is fantastic and these very high downforce prototypes, uh, you get massive lateral Gs and it's really right on the limit stuff which every driver loves. There isn't really anything that Fuji's missing and we've got one of the most iconic sites in the world behind us. What a backdrop. <laughs> Well, we all know what a fantastic circuit this is, but let's have a look at this car in detail. This is my TSO40, an evolution of last year's car that won the championship. You can see they're pretty stunning cars from the outside, these LMP1s. Under the current regulations, they're a little bit narrower than they were last year, uh, with a little less downforce, all focused on efficiency. That's the name of the game in this category now. The rear wing, the aim is to try and keep it as low as possible. You want to keep it out of the airflow as much as you can. Working uh, back through the car, you can see you've got the shark fin, that's there for a regulation. The outlets for the airflow, um, to try and speed up the airflow through the car towards the back. That journey starts from the front of the car, which we'll get to now. Different teams have different philosophies and it's all about trying to keep uh, as little drag as possible on the car. And then all bits on the car, like these flick-ups, are really important. They help to channel the air uh, around the, the wheels that are rotating. They always cause the most uh, friction and uh, disturbance to the, to the airflow. So it's all about trying to get it away from the, that rotating wheel. This is the, the driver's office. It's pretty tight and cramped in there. And uh, already got my, my seat in, so the smaller drivers, like me, have to uh, have a seat insert. It's quite hard to get into. First thing, steering wheel pretty close to the driver as you can see it's, it's quite cramped in there um, got a lot of controls on there um, you've got your gear paddles uh, like normal up on the right down on the left uh, you've got your wiper and your uh, light flashing this is the electric power that sits right beside you it's about the same weight as I am and uh, it's uh, about half the power of our car it comes from the electric so uh, in LMP1 obviously a hybrid class, so in the beginning quite a scary concept to think that you're sitting so close to something so powerful and uh, full of electricity, but um, yeah, we're, we're more than used to it by now. Obviously this race for us in Japan is all about the fans here and the support for Toyota, so let's go and meet them. Well, of course, Mount Fuji dominates the photographs and the images. The atmosphere here at Fuji International Speedway is created by the enthusiasm of the Japanese fans. Personally, I think Toyota is always in this, but I'm a fan of Toyota, Audi, Porsche, and I'm a fan of Audi, Porsche, and I'm a fan of as part of their skill curriculum, over 1,400 children were invited to Fuji to experience the science, engineering and technology involved in FIA World Endurance Championship racing. I was and whilst Toyota obviously are the home favourites, there are plenty of supporters for the other manufacturers. Even for me, it's impressive uh, compared to some other overseas race uh, they have so into the racing and uh, they are always supportive and they are supporting basically for whole race, uh, not only for us but they some people like Saudi, some people like Porsche, and uh, some people uh, is even into LMP2 or GT class. So 
they really know uh, what, what racing is and uh, it, yeah, it's uh, really good to see every time. Extreme enthusiasm and an appetite for endurance racing is tempered with the Japanese culture of politeness and respect to their heroes. They are always behind you, uh, coming right after the qualified, asking about everything. It's just they are really passionate and they have so much respect. When we say we have no time, just we come back later, then they say, okay, no problem, and they can wait two hours. We are so sorry for them sometimes, but they are, they are there waiting for hours. And we try to do our best, uh, but uh, it's a respect uh, in between them and us, and it's really nice. As ever, the autograph session is keenly anticipated. Saturday night into race day Sunday morning. The weather not mirroring the respect of the fans for the stars and cars of the FIA World Endurance Championship. The fans' enthusiasm not dampened by the weather. brightest and boldest. There's nothing that they can do to influence the conditions. The plans may have changed. Their goal remains exactly the same. But now they have to beat not only their competitors, but the elements, the clock and the circuit. of six hours of Fuji. And so to the pole sitters in Le Mans GTE Am. The Corvette of Labra competition posted the fastest time, but after the qualifying was found to have the wrong rollover fuel valve fitted, so SMP Racing promoted to pole. Perhaps the only people in the GT field happy to see the rain are Porsche. It looked like it's going to be a lot of rain, a lot of spray from the other cars, but uh, it's drivable and it's, it should be fun. Uh, it looks like it's a good track for wet anyway, uh, but there's going to be a lot of spray the first few laps, I think. There have only been three sessions of wet weather running all season in the World Endurance Championship and none here at Fuji, adding an extra element to the driver's challenge. 
everybody is kind of in uh, unknown territory. But we'll see how it goes. You know, I think it's it will be easier for the cars who are with a clear view ahead, as now just going slow, bringing the car to the grid, we could hardly see anything what, what's ahead. So I think this will be probably the main challenge to start with. On pole in LFGT April, Ferrari number 71. James Collado knows it's going to be a very hard opening stint as the weather is not favorable to the Ferrari. We know Porsche is very fast in the rain, so um, it's damage limitation. Let's hope they're not three, or f three to five seconds quicker because sometimes they are. Um, so it's just about reducing that sort of damage, really. Sandberg will start the pole sitting Ligier GSP2 Nissan of G Drive Racing. Their teammates alongside them ahead of Team Saad Moran in third. At the front of the field, the manufacturers have lined up two by two. Appropriately enough for the weather today. For us, it might be uh, might be better to have a very eventful race uh, if we want to aim for a good result. So um, hopefully we'll have a good race like that and, and see where we can uh, end up. But uh, clearly on the dry condition, it would be very hard. If it's wet, maybe something can happen. Andrea Lotterer holds the LMP1 lap record here set in 2013. He knows exactly what it takes to be quick around Fuji Speedway. Let's see, you know, who will have the better car in the wet. We have a new aero package, so hopefully this will help us. And um, yeah, it's time to win again. And especially uh, for Ben, Marcel and me here, is uh, Fuji is a race we haven't won yet. So very motivated and there's a championship to win. So we gotta get our, gotta get our stuff together. As usual this season, it's a portion on pole position. This time the 17 team of Timo Bernard, Mark Webber, who'll start, and Brendan Hartley. The times are very close in the dry, we saw that in testing uh, and in qualifying compared to the Audi. The wet, we don't know. Um, I think we're, we're quite confident with the downforce that we brought, but the first few laps are going to be action-packed. I'm sure the Audi guys behind are going to be aggressive. Um, there's a lot to play for. Driver championships, um, team championships, it's all very close, so yeah, don't miss the start of the race. As you join me towards the front of the grid, everybody's asking, what do Audi have to offer? They were so close in qualifying, the closest they've been in some time to those dominant Porsches who yet again lock out the front row of the grid. <laughs> Although the track is obviously wet, the weather refuses to be consistent and the teams wait till the very last moment to decide on tyres. Clearly it has to be some kind of wet, is it a full wet, is it an intermediate or is it a very clever Michelin slick to mediate, the wet weather tyre without grooves. It's a different type of tension as we build towards the start of the race. We have one minute to start the race behind the safety car. There will be no formation lap. There will be no formation lap. Race time will start at 11 o'clock. Grand Marshal here at Fuji, Yujiro Terada. Japanese driving legend and 29 times a driver at the Mall. The high technology supercars of the World Endurance Championship roll off the grid behind the safety car. The clock has started, the six hours are underway competition is yet to begin. Porsche once again have locked out the front row and Mark Webber will lead the cars around the Fuji circuit. It's Audi and Toyota behind them. G-Drive on pole position 
with Sam Bird starting the 26 car. James Collado will start at the head of the field in GTE Pro. In GTE Am, championship leaders, the 72 SMP Racing Ferrari. Well, the track conditions are far too damp for the normal rolling start. These high downforce prototypes throw a huge amount of spray up into the air. And basically, it's like driving into a wall of fog. 39 minutes behind the Audi safety car is about to come to an end. Look for the green light, there it is. And we are racing. Mark Webber then leads the cars down towards the first corner. His teammate is there alongside him and everyone else. Well, I don't know, I just can't see them. Imagine what it's like being behind there. Here comes the Audi of Fesla. The Toyota's looking good as well. Roman Dumas is getting a little slide on coming out of turn number one there in the second of the Porsches. And here comes Fesla. The Swiss driver, brilliant in the rain. Mark Webber is clearing off. He's gone, but the battle's for second. Webber's off. Webber's gone off just after Coca-Cola turned number four. But he's managed to keep it out of the wall somehow. Masterful driving by the Aussie. And the Audi's gone through in all of that. It is Marcel Fesla that leads. Three lights on the side, but first position for Audi number seven. And now it's a battle for second place. This time it's the second Audi coming through. Down towards Dunlop for the first time. Romain Demar is defending, defending very hard indeed. Oh, how can they even see where to go? Oli Jarvis there has gone through. Jarvis has gone through in the second. Demar's got a problem. Demar is slow and through comes one, two Toyotas. Oh my goodness me, what a terrible first lap for Porsche. Weber's dropped back and now Demar's back in the fifth as well. It's going to be Audi, Audi, Toyota, Toyota, the top four at the end of the first lap. What a brilliant first turn of the dice here at Fuji in these conditions. All the drivers working miracles to stay on the circuit. Marcel Fesler doing the best job, the rain master from Switzerland. On board with Weber and look at his view. Oh my God, how is he going to see anything there? He's got his teammate Roman Dumas in front of him who's going down the inside of Alex Wirtz. Nakajima is in there in the defending world champion number one car. There he is on the right hand side of the picture. And one, two, three abreast for a moment as the Porsches try to undo some of that damage from the first lap here. Well, this wasn't in the script from the brand from Stuttgart. They expected to be leading out at this point and their championship rivals, the Audi number seven, is at the head of the field. This is exactly what they didn't want to see. And hearing from the pit lane radio that Romain Demar hit his pit lane speed limiter in the first chicane, that's why he went backwards. Down towards turn number one again and the Audis are clearing off. The battle is now for third, fourth, fifth and sixth. As the two Porsches begin their recovery drive, Weber already has gone through past Wurtz. Wurtz is fighting off Dumas, but Dumas has gone through. And Wurtz will have to give that up on board with Alex. Knows this place very well, of course. Fighting back, though, at Coca-Cola. Oh, there's a touch! And they're both going to spin. That's Wurtz and Romain Dumas both going around. Somehow, they managed to keep it off the wall. And there's the tag in turn four. Now the GTE battle, this is the AM class and that's the battle for first. That's uh, Manu Collard and Victor Scheiter with Stuart Hall in the reinvigorated Aston Martin this weekend. They've found a little more pace thanks to balance of performance, but the two Ferraris at the moment are battling for the AM first position. And the spinner, that's the Stracker car, the 42 that's gone around. Hasn't affected this scrap for the lead though. Very close there, almost a touch. Victor Scheiter is doing a great job. And here comes the Aston Martin down at the hairpin, but it's quick into here. And there's Scheiter going through again. He's taking the lead, but here's Stuart Hall. He's done them both in one manoeuvre, third to first. That is brilliant. What a return to form by Stuart Hall and Aston Martin. Well, this clearly the move of the race. Stuart Hall watching the two Ferraris battling, an opportunist manoeuvre, clean as you like, brilliant. That's exactly what any driver would like to do. That's Kaz Nakajima, and right behind him now is Mark Webber, who has the pace down into turn number one, pulls out of the slipstream and the spray, gets to the inside. Oh, but Kaz is not making that easy. 
tries to go the long way around. There might be a bit more grip around there, you know. Eventually, the Porsche has just about got it done. No, here comes Kaz Nakajima on the inside, and now he's got the inside line for the left-hander, and he'll take it back. Well, this is the kind of competitive spirit from Toyota we haven't seen for a while. Great to see this battling either side of Patrick Dempsey in the 77 car who held his line and allowed those two prototypes to race. This is brilliant from Toyota. They've been hoping for rain and they are clearly much more on the pace of the two of the manufacturers and on their home ground as well. Here's Roman Dumas with a traffic jam of cars ahead of him. Past the Patron ASM P2 car. There's Nagajima, that's the next target for both of the Porsches. Weber still hasn't been able to get close. And just look at this manoeuvre, outside, inside. It's like a video game. Let's go to GTE Pro. AF Corsa with the two Porsches behind the Ferrari. Tony Vlander trying to hold on to second place in the race. They've had a horrible few races and the defending world champions really need to find some form. And here comes Patrick Pele down the inside to turn number 10. And watch the 91 car as well. Michael Christensen didn't get past the Ferrari there. Can he take another opportunity? This is now the battle for second, third and fourth, remember. And here comes Christensen, sticks it up the inside. Difficult manoeuvre to pull off. The road falls away, but he's made it through. And now looks back at Tony Vlander in the F course of Ferrari. Nakajima and behind him Roman Dumas goes to driver's right early and powers by what an amazing turn of speed that's eight megajoules of hybrid energy versus six in the Toyota and it really counted there and down towards turn one that pass is done dusted thank you and good night and Dumas immediately puts a gap on Kaz Nakajima at the head of the field it's been a brilliant drive we know how good Marcel Fesler is in the rain. And he's really proved the confidence that was shown in him by the team. Not a Fuji specialist, but certainly a rain specialist. And he's pulling out the gap to Oli Jarvis's teammate. In LMP2, the Signatec Alpine. That's Paul Loup Chatan driving the car and in traffic at the moment how difficult it is to see from the open top cars. Just checks the position of the Aston. Now down the long one and a half kilometer straight. Here's the ball for second position. Roman Dumas has dragged up to Oli Jarvis and again used the superior power and energy displacement of the Porsche. Went to the inside there to defend. Roman, he was nowhere near you, didn't have to do that. He's put himself on the wrong line, but just about holds on. We're back in GTE Pro again. And here is Christensen, Michael Christensen coming down the inside, that is the 71 car Collado in the lead of the class but can't hold on, exactly what James Collado didn't want to see, the Porsche coming up behind him. That's Stefan Sarazan about to jump in the number two, he's a rally driver so these conditions won't displease him, Alex Verge jumping out. And here's the defending world champion car. Great first in from Kaz Nakajima. He'll be replaced by Anthony Davidson. Yeah, it was good. Uh, obviously, we could show something different to the normal race, uh, which I hope for in this weather. Um, yeah, it was very difficult to keep the car on the track and uh, keep Mark behind, but uh, somehow managed. And uh, I hope the people could enjoy the battle between the cars. There's Mark Webber waiting for the fuel in the pit lane. The Audi stopped a couple of three laps ago, so the Porsche's getting a little more fuel mileage from their petrol than the Audis did from the diesels. You can see the aerodynamic eyebrows on the back there. And there is Fesler. He stayed in the car after the first pit stop. And he's gone through. He's gone back through into second position now. Fesler still at the wheel after their first pit stop.
Overall, Le Mans winner Nick Tandy has been pretty much Mr. Perfect this year. But not here, down at turn 10, the Dunlop chicane and braked himself. Now he held on to the lead in class in that mistake. But a moment or two ago at turn number one, went wide, took a very long way back. And don't worry about the Porsche going through in the background there, but watch out for the Signatech Alpine. Paul Luc Chatan going through into the lead of LMP2 as Nick Tandy did a little bit of rally crossing to get back onto the track. On board with the new leader then, Paul Luc Chatan at turn number six. And look, there's the blue flag flashing in the car just underneath the Alpine side. That means the faster car coming through. Look to the left. Looked like a Toyota to me, but who knows in that spray. But absolutely imperative that the drivers get all the assistance they need when the weather's like this. Marcel, if you need it, use KFS. If you need it, use KFS. The both Porsche is right behind you. I'm sure you can see them. Yeah, but now stay off the terrain you from. Marcel Fesler being spoken to by Lena Gage. She's telling him to use a little more hybrid boost. That was the code that she was giving him to try and defend. He's lost one position already there to Romain Dumas. Now he's going to have to defend against a very determined Mark Webber. Here's Webber then, trying to take the position from the Swiss driver. He's gone through, made that look very easy indeed. And Marcel Fesler, even with extra boost, couldn't defend there, but Weber goes wide, almost off the circuit. There's a chance for Fesler. Gets side by side, he's on the wrong side here, though. The right-hand side is the wrong side here because the next corner is a left-hander, and Weber will be able to hold on to it. No, he won't, because the Swiss driver defies the laws of physics and somehow holds on to his position. Amazing driving by both of those very experienced pilots. So now Fesler into the pit lane, Andre Lotterer there, ready to jump in. Wet tyres on the car now, but the slick intermediate Michelin's about to go on. Yeah, I think now there is not so much uh, water on the track anymore, so I think at one point you have to decide to do something, especially the, the lap times start to increase. So uh, they were a little bit tr tricky outside, so I think it could be now the right choice and anyway because we have to stop uh, before Porsche we have to do something because otherwise they uh, anyway can do something similar what we do so we, we don't have much choice and we cannot see what the opponents are doing these treadless intermediates an amazing development by Michelin in the last few years work like a hand cut slick but have no grooves on it whatsoever no I don't know how it works either now that's Oli Webb in the Saad Moran, and that is in turn number one. What's happened here? Well, he's gone off, tried to do the right thing and hit the return road, but the car just doesn't have enough steering lock to get round. Full course yellow, full course yellow. We are under full course yellow procedures. Well, this is a massive stroke of luck for the number 18 Porsche. They'll get their pit stop done on this round under full course yellow. They're going to save a huge amount of time, a massive benefit to the 18 car. And they're going on to intermediates as well. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Well, it was, yeah, for sure it was quite fun. I mean, it was a little bit crazy, those two stint. At the start, I need to protect Mark. So when he spawned after, unfortunately, I don't know what happened. I pressed a pit limiter, so a lot of car overtook me. And after the Toyota hit me. So in uh, two laps, I was P6. I say, so that's not a good start. But after I run good, we had a little bit of problem uh, with the brake temperature. So I catch very quickly uh, Marcel Fassler, but after for a long time, I have to take care of my brake. And at the end, I push again to gain a little bit of time to the other. So yeah, it looks good. It was quite fun. We are back to green at racing speed. We are back to green at racing speed. And Luca Degrassi trying to unlap himself from the 18 there. He went past Anthony Davidson, the Audi and the Toyota. One lap back on that 18 car because of the full course yellow pit stop. Over 50 seconds, the margin that was gained by the 18 over its teammate, the 17 car. Here is the 17, and it's close quarters. Combat resumed down at the chicane at the bottom end of the circuit through traffic. Brendan Hartley now on board the 17. And 
and Andre Lotterer going on the inside, takes the position. Marvellous manoeuvre. Lotterer is not only the LMP one lap record here, but also in super formula, 640 kilo machines. Very quick around here, so he knows this place very well. Ah, now this is bad news for Toyota. The number two car is going back into the garage. But they've been competitive for the first half of the race. Well, there's the problem. There's no driver. OK, yeah, uh, we have a problem with the HV cooling system. Well, the guys are going to work on the side port. Has there been some damage there? Oh, yes, there has. The 88 Proton, the Abu Dhabi car. Now, that's down at the chicane. They shouldn't really have been close together. The Toyota should have been quicker. Brilliant work by the Toyota Kazoo mechanics have got the number two car back out and fixed 13 minutes plus in the box. Here is a drive-through penalty. Anthony Davidson in the car now and it seems at his last pit stop he did something wrong on the way to the pit. Well, he should be to the right of that line, but it's that line there, the one that's across the track, that he has to be inside of. And Davidson then comes through, 29 seconds to drive down the long pit lane here. That's a big loss for the number one car. LMP2 leader into the pits, Nick Tandy has been behind the wheel for more than half a race. And they look like Dunlop Inters that were coming out as Matt Housen prepares himself for his turn. Yes, definitely Inters. Here comes the Porsche number 17. Oh, that's Hartley down the inside. And surely there's no way back for Andrea Lotterer here. There's a little bit of tape or something is thrown up from the Aston ahead of them. And Brendan Hartley takes the position. That's the view from behind. And a new second place then. It's Porsche back to positions one and two. The 18 car almost a minute up the road though from the 17. So just over half distance, and what a three hours we've had. Porsche first and second, Audi third and fourth, but Toyota still in it, at least with the one car. KCMG leading the championship and leading LMP2. It's AF Corsa on the pit stop strategy, staying ahead in GTE Pro. The two Porsches look very good behind them though, and in GTE Am, it's a brilliant drive from Marco Seyfried that's put the Dempsey Proton Racing 77 up into the lead. One of the great things about the Fuji event is there's plenty to see off the track as well as on the Toyota GT1, my favourite ever Le Mans car, as well as a lot of fabulous old machinery and plenty of experiences too. The fans can keep up with the action on the big screen. Make sure they don't miss a moment of what's going on out on the track. leading you might say a little fortunately after that full course yellow pit stop gave them 50 seconds plus of an advantage but they have executed perfectly and you can only play the cards that you are dealt Mark Lieb is doing a great job at the head of the field really I have another steering but what is doing? you are faster than them right pace is okay Patrick Pele's pace is very okay because he's caught the leader that Ferrari is the man he needs to pass to go back into the lead of the GTE Pro category. Proper slipstreaming down the long straight here, one and a half kilometers, and the pass is made. Oh, is it though? 
Yes, and Pele, despite the understeer, is leading. Brendan Hartley into the pit lane. It looks like fuel only. See what the Michelin man says. Yeah, no tyres. Let's go down to the pit lane. Here's Louise with Mark Webber. I think uh, we're not sure if the number seven puts slicks on, but it's just right on the bubble. But it also starts to miss with rain again. So uh, we were looking at going to leave the inters on and then it gives us options if it goes dry in the next 15 laps we can put the slick on. Also uh, we're racing the seven, you know we want to beat the seven today and um, we're managing quite a few things with our car at the moment so uh, doing well and um, yeah, it's so far so good so uh, fingers crossed. comes the number one Toyota, a little bit of battle scarring on the right front, the headlamp glass has just been dislodged, a little bit of contact earlier on, it's really slowed them down I don't think, well it can't be that aerodynamically efficient, yeah that's the way to deal with that guys. Out of the pit, Seb Buemi getting, oh just a little bit wide on slick tyres and spins on his outlap, and there's another spinner on the outlap, that's Patrick Pele, a very uncharacteristic mistake from him in the Porsche. Oh look, the Ferrari going through there, and let's see this again. Nice recovery from Pele, but that Ferrari is going through, the Porsche loses a position. LMP2 battle for the lead, and Richard Bradley's about to go through, is he? Oh, there's a little touch there, and into the lead. 47 has gone through, that's it, change of position, Richard Bradley has made it through on Roman Rusinov, battling for the lead of the class and the championship, remember, KCMG with the advantage, now this was a moment or two ago, oh Richard, that was a little bit ambitious at turn one, no touch there though, then coming down the hill, this happened, a little bit of payback, come on guys, play nicely, into the pit lane for the number eight Audi, Less than an hour to go now, and through goes their teammate. That's the car leading the World Championship, remember, the seven. And, oh, no windscreen wiper there. That looks like it's been gone for a little while. Now this is, oh, a touch! That is Rusinov going back into the lead of LMP2, but making a misjudgment there, I think, going down into the braking area at turn 10. So another look at this. Bradley defends in the middle of the road. Racing incident. I'm sure Bradley won't see it that way. And the Porsche guys enjoying the close quarters racing. Well, this is the 18, the leader in the pit lane. A drive through, a long run through the pit lane. Improving under a yellow flag at turn number one. That will be so frustrating for Neil Jarney. But he still has plenty of a lead. Second place car not in sight. Well, this is G-Drive and KCMG at it again, but this time it's Gustavo Jackerman in the orange and black car. Richard Bradley getting forced over towards the wall. Remember, there's already been contact. Jackerman was a lap down last time when he ran into the back of the 47, but this time they're on the lead lap. Bradley had to stop for the puncture that that contact caused, and again, it's very tight. And this time, Bradley will not want to give up third position. They want to hang on to the championship lead. Oh, and there's been a hit! There's been a hit down towards turn number 10, and that's a big one, and Richard Bradley, the 47, are out of this race. Massive championship implications. Let's have another look here. He tries to go one way, then the other. Um, I don't think there's much to say. I was hit probably, I think, at least six times that I can remember by two cars, and one of them terminated our race. Uh, it's a shame the race was good. Uh, we set the tyres up to, to come on quite quickly when they were slick, so I was able to catch Roman and... I pulled a, a very a move on him, which I was quite proud of from a long way back, and uh, at which point he was quite dirty with me for the first time going down the back straight amongst many. But, uh, you know, that's the way it goes, and this championship isn't over yet. And uh, if I'm going to put up as much of a fight as that today, you can bet we'll be putting up as much in the next races. So we all saw what happened, and uh, we know what happened, so we'll go to the next race. Action all the way through the six hours, under five minutes to go, and here comes Collado. This is a battle for position, so important for the championship, for the 
Porsche and Ferrari manufacturers and the teams and the drivers and somehow Pele steers ahead through corner number one it's almost fully dry there on the racing line but Collado comes round the outside oh that's going to be hard to do in a GT car Pele has the more preferred line through the left-hander this is for second and a 1-2 for EF Corsa Collado off the track his tyres are going to be wet oh he almost loses it slick tyres and a wet track I think that's enough for Porsche to hold on. Now at the head of the field, the 17 car has gone through. Smart team orders the 18 after that drive-through penalty. Just told to ease off a little bit and it will be three wins in a row for the number 17 919 hybrid. And with their point that they gain for pole position, they will leave Fuji as the championship leaders through. Comes Timo Bernhard to finish. Brendan Hartley and Mark Webber have done their Good work job, too. Mate. Good job, that's all we needed. That's exactly all we needed. Maximum points. All as we can, guys. Well done, everyone. Total team effort from Porsche number 17 and 18. Audi number 7 will lose the championship lead they've held since Silverstone. That was a gamble on the slick tyres that didn't work. I mean, for the championship, it's very important for us to clinch this victory. Uh, sorry for number 18, I think they had an issue at the end. Uh, but important is uh, Porsche 1 2, uh, definitely for the Constructors' Championship. And I mean, for us, for Group 17, was very good. We didn't have an easy race. I mean, from the, to, from the start, with, we had a lot of uh, difficulties, but I think we managed well. And in the end, uh, uh, it's a well deserved 1 2 for Porsche, and that's, uh, that's the main thing. LMP2, exciting but aggressive and controversial. G-Drive 26 taking the victory and the championship lead with no finish from the 47 KCM G-Car. But the stewards looking at many incidents from the race and the result remains provisional. At the end we won. It's a, a very hard competition with the KCM G. We won and uh, I think the, the suspense is at the, the maximum for the two last races. There could be no doubt that Sam Bird put in a brilliant performance, backed up by Julian Canal in the worst of the conditions. And they stand on the top step of the podium. Alpine in second and their teammates in third. In GTE Am, Dempsey Proton took their first pull at Texas. Now they have their first WEC win. It's the first time I really kind of raced at this level in this kind of condition and uh, I learned a lot and I tried not to worry about the the end result. I made a couple of mistakes that I got away with, uh, thank God, and, and you know, these guys did a phenomenal job and, and uh, you know, I, I think the strategy was really right on. It really was uh, brilliant and we had incredible uh, tire wear, you know, we just the Michelin tires in the rain were phenomenal. Patrick Dempsey matching the times of the pros in that difficult early stint brings home the victory ahead of Aston Martin and AF Corsa. In GT Pro, a return to form from Tony Vlander and Jimmy Bruni, the world champions, are back in the championship hunt. Big, big thanks to AF Corsa, my teammate Jimmy, who did an excellent job uh, as always. Uh, great effort also with Michelin, a great collaboration. So today, uh, big, big relief. And let's not talk about the championship. Let's go to the next race and repeat this, and then we will see what happens in Bahrain. A long first stint by Tony Vlander, backed up as ever by Jimmy Bruni. Their teammates in third, and Porsche team Mantai in second. Tightens up the race for the championship in the Endurance Manufacturers' Cup with them and Porsche. At the head of the field and in LMP1 hybrid, the Porsches are one and two. It's the third in a row for the 17 squad. Porsche are unbeaten since Spa. But it's the right Audi in third position as far as the Drivers' Championship is concerned. In the manufacturers, Porsche increased their lead over Audi and Toyota. Momentum built by Porsche. Another 1-2 finish in the shadow of Mount Fuji. Audi get the third and fourth position and good to see Toyota being more competitive. In GTE Pro, AF Corsa and the 51 squad take their win in the last two races of the season. A 
congratulations to Dempsey Broad on Racing. They join the Winners Club in WEC. It's just one point in the Drivers' Championship and all to play for as we go to Shanghai. Coming to Fuji to race is always a favourite for the teams, the drivers and the press corps of the FIA World Endurance Championship. As the race is over, work just beginning for the team members as they don't have time to go back to home base before the next round in China. Time to pack up the gear. Wash your clothes, take a deep breath, in three weeks time, do it all again in Shanghai. I'm Anthony Davidson. More than a race, a premium motorsport event. Uh, Lucas, uh, gonna go green in uh, one minute. The six hours of Shanghai. Okay, engine off, engine off. Okay, they want you in three positions, they want you in three positions. More than 300 kilometers per hour. Battles on track, ultimate performance. Passion. Good job, life. Emotion. The spirit of Le Mans comes to China. Every second counts. The only limit is the clock. The six hours of Shanghai on the 1st of November. The spirit of Le Mans is coming to Shanghai. Be there. Join us. Perfect weekend, guys.